Welcome back, everybody. Uh, podcast number 27. Um, we're going to do, uh, we, I've got several questions that we want to cover. Um, we're not going to cover them in this uh, podcast. We're just going to do a, a quick update. Um, you know, I was thinking about it. Ben and I went over to Buffalo County um, to the farm that we hunt on over there, and we set up a bunch of licking sticks this week. Hodeg is another brand of ours. Hodeg Licking Stick is a product line of ours that we patented and took to market over the over the last couple of years. But we really have the the patent actually came the same time that Dogbone's patent came, so it was a long time ago. But uh, we were on the, on the ride over there. Uh, we brought Arrow. Arrow is a little uh, Malinois Shepherd mix that we're working with. Uh, got her in for a month. Fun little project that we're going to talk about uh, primarily for this podcast, but. Uh, maybe not primarily, but a large part of it. But on our ro- ride over to Buffalo County, um, we had plenty of time, uh, windshield time, and I listened to a couple podcasts. Ben was with me. We put a couple podcasts on. We both made uh, notes, and I'm always interested in hearing other people, uh, their thoughts and opinions. I just read somebody saying something about it the other day, but um, I, I, you know, ours is kind of different. Oh, we got a arrow wanderer here. Ben's gonna go grab her. Um, put her back on place and she breaks off of there so so this is live in my kitchen um, the little ninja just snuck off and was um, I never even heard her but so if she does break off there again we're gonna set ourselves up for success instead of uh, positioning ourselves for failure by not paying attention to her not being able to uh, make a correction timely sharp crisp if she does come off we'll just put her in the kennel and then you can hear about that part of it because you will hear about it uh, she's uh, a little vocal in the kennel yet but she's getting there we'll talk about that but anyway we were talking about podcasts and I kind of thought about our podcast and I realized you know ours is probably I don't know if it call, it is a podcast I guess because of what we're doing with it but it's almost like a audio journal because that's really what we're ah, 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 ah. she just go right into the kennel with her so we got little pup who just um now i do wonder too if she has to go to the bathroom the way she's going to the door why don't you take her outside take her out the back um you guys are really in the in the in the midst of a training session here but ben's going to take the pup outside if she doesn't go right away ben bring her back in and then she goes in the kennel and then you'll hear what we've been going through the last week or so but um it's kind of a it's more of an audio journal i think kind of documenting some of the projects some of the things that we're doing i do like using the question and answer platform i think those are really um valuable because i think Rarely does one person have a question. Usually a lot of people have the same question. And by us answering it, I think it helps people that are listening. So we are going to stick with that. Um, But we're just going to kind of, I I don't know that we're going to necessarily set it up as a specific, you know, this is the way we do it every time. Um, I do like them shorter. So we're going to stick with a little bit shorter um, uh, platform that's a little bit shorter, shorter sessions. Um, I think those are valuable too. Some of them are really long and I just, I just can't get through it all. But, um, so anyway, update on arrow, uh, Ben's got her outside right now. I think going to the bathroom, then she'll come in. Uh, she's a little rambunctious this morning. We've done some filming with her. Um, we're filming some of her training. She had a ton of energy, um, this morning. Uh, she just got fed. Uh, now she should settle in. We had a real nice session with her. I think it's important after a good session to put him in the kennel. Make sure you flip the blanket down, Ben. Yep. Um, we are covering her kennel with a blanket to help her settle in a little bit. She gets a little antsy in there. Uh, she's pretty vocal in there. She's a thousand times better than she was a week ago, when she a uh, week and a half now since she got here. So, but uh, update on her, that is what we're doing. We are really doing very, very basic fundamental things. Crate crate uh, conditioning if you want to call it that getting her used to the kennel getting her to settle into the kennel getting her to be quiet in the kennel Um, that's going to be really important i think it's probably going to be super annoying to hear it in the background Um, but we can't feed that we can't give her the attention that she's looking for she would prefer to not be in there right now so maybe there's value in having that whininess in the background so you can hear the duration that it's going to take for her to settle down um, it's probably going to make it real hard to listen to maybe, but, uh, that's, that's the price you're going to pay here. So 
Uh, that's one thing that we've been working on. She's getting a lot better at it. Heel work, a little bit of heel work. We're getting her to give this pressure to the neck. We're using a little bit of a, a loose slip collar. Um, she's responding really well to it. She's a real smart dog, wants to work with us. I like that. Um, remote sit. She's got a, a bad little habit of she likes to lay down on her back and quit. She hangs, she wants to, it's a real submissive thing and people think it's cute and I've posted a picture of it or a video of it and I had a girl make a response to it on Instagram right away. Oh my gosh, how cute, I wanna do a belly rub. She knows people wanna do belly rubs when, when she does that. So, we don't do belly rubs. We say, no, nope, get up, sit down. Now I don't mind them laying down. If they, if they realize they're gonna be somewhere for a while and they lay down because of that, I don't mind that. Um, so we can be okay with that. Um, but remote sits, patience, niece making circles around her. Uh, those are some of the things that we're working on. Uh, recall, especially with distractions. It should be real easy to get frustrated listening to this. You know, the first night we had her, we went on for hours. I went outside, I knew she had to go to the, didn't have to go to the bathroom because I had let her out and I knew she went, did she go when she went out yep. there? So she had to go. So was it her, did she, so she went when she went outside. Did she have to go to the bathroom? Is that why she broke off her place and went to the door? I don't know for sure, but I know that we gave her a chance and she made a really good decision and she did it and now we came in and now we put her up. And it's not punishment, it's simply a place for her to kind of collect herself. She's getting a little bit spun up and her running off of her place is habit forming and we can't have it. And I can't pay close attention to her right now because I'm doing this podcast. So setting her up for success is important. I'll put her on place today, but I'll be sitting there and I'll be watching and paying attention whether I'm working on my computer or whatever it is. And I will be very quick to correct her if she even takes a foot off of it. And then she'll realize, don't step off here, dad doesn't pick on me. In fact, he might tell me I'm a pretty good girl. But if I do come off, he's gonna be right on top of me. So. Um, that's something that, you know, we've been working on. Um, I made a couple little retrieves with her this last weekend, 4th of July weekend. I was up, up North. Uh, she does not like the water much yet. I think she will eventually, but she's not a big water dog. Um, she waded in. How do I introduce dogs to water? I had this question over the weekend. Um, how do you introduce these dogs to the water? I, I personally go right in the water with them. I don't want to try to coax them or force them into it. I walk in myself, I encourage them to come as, she would get as deep as probably halfway up her legs. She wouldn't get into the water to the point where her belly was in the water. So, I, it was nice, warm water, it wasn't cold. Don't put them into cold water early on. I'm just gonna let her, you can tell she's a little bit frantic right now. In her mind right now, she's going, get me the hell out of here. And if I go let her out right now, she would bark that much more, that much harder. Um, she would throw that much bigger of a fit. So we're not gonna reward that. So sometimes it's, I mean, it's a, it's a long game of patience. Big, big, big time game of patience. So. The water part, um, we, we let her do as much as she wanted, but what I did like was she wasn't gonna go into the water. So I needed to build, I wanted to make a couple little retrieves there, see how she did. She was real interested in retrieving. My dogs were retrieving. She was interested in the dummies. Um, so I went on the dock and I just pitched the do dummy down to the end of the dock and I knew she was gonna jump in the water. So she ran out, she picked it up very confidently. She turned around and she came running back to me on the dock. She had nowhere else to go. So I encouraged her back to me. She wasn't necessarily bringing it to me. She was bringing it back to land and I intercepted it. And so then we did that three, four times in a row and she did it really nicely. So we, we established some early retrieve habit. Go straight out, pick it up, come straight back. And we were forced it by using a, the dock itself. Um, now I've made, a, I've made a retrieve with her uh, last night. I used a tennis ball, I rolled it down the driveway. She picked it up, she came running back and she did not want to bring it back to me. She wanted to go anywhere but me. So I ended up, I walked away from her. I left her alone. 
Um, I don't go chasing dogs with stuff in their mouth. So I, I walked away and I made kind of a little bit of a commotion. And she looked at me and went, man, he's going the other way. She started coming towards me. And when she did, I told her how good she was. I pulled another tennis ball out of my bag. She was real interested in that. She came to me. I took the one from her. I gave her a bunch of praise. I put the lead back on her and I brought her back to the house. I was not gonna do that again because I know what would have happened. She did have done the same thing. Didn't want that. So I realized her retrieves are gonna happen in the hallway. Um, I don't have the dock. If I had a dock here, I would use it, but I don't have that. That's up north. So I'm going to use the hallway just like I would a puppy, um, just like I do my little pups. Roll it, roll a little balled up sock down the hallway, the tennis ball, the bumper, the dummy, whatever you want to use. Get her to have an understanding of there's no other options. And then encourage her back to you. And as soon as she gets back to you, lots of praise. And then the habit starts forming straight out, straight back. And then we can start adding distractions. I, this dog, I can't do everything I want to do. There are, there are distinct differences in where I train with her. This morning we started filming out. Um, we we're going to do heel work. We we're going to do remote sit. We we're going to do some patience and steadiness. Um, I started in the grass. Fresh mowed lawn in the shade, getting a little warm this morning, so we got in the shade. And she couldn't help herself for 30 seconds at a time to not chew on the grass, pick stuff up, smell, get that nose down. I went to heel with her and her nose is down constantly. I can't have that. So I said, Ben, we can't do it here. So we moved, we went over on the driveway. The driveway is packed down gravel, almost like concrete. Concrete would be even better. I don't have concrete, but my driveway is gravel and it's packed down. She can still pick up gravel and play with it if she wants, but it's less tempting than a ball of grass. Um, it's less smell than in the grasses. So we moved over to the driveway um, and she did 10 times better. I probably went a little bit long. Um, hindsight, I probably went a little bit long with everything we did. We brought her into the house, uh, we fed her, um, we showed, we filmed all this stuff. So we're gonna be showing some kind of um, we're hoping to document some of the training and be able to share it with you. Um, so th th we did a session in here before feeding time. That's something that didn't happen for the first time with Ben here. It's been happening now for a week. Um, food has become more valuable to her, partially because of the, f I don't give her free food. She's used to having free food at home, um, kibble all day long, and she could just take a bite, go do something else, take a bite. Doesn't happen here. So we feed twice a day, we feed in the morning, we feed in the evening. That becomes a huge reward. By that time, she's hungry, so she's gonna eat it quickly. We like to travel with our, we travel with our dogs all the time. We don't have all day to feed the dog. We might have to stop, feed them, get back on the road. So when we do that, I want them to understand they've got a short window of time that they can eat. And so we practice that and we prep them and we form that habit right here at the house. It also is a great chance for us to get great sessions and training lessons. Um, she works on steadiness, she works on patience, she works on lining, we're, we're prepping her to send her on retrieves. It all starts with a bowl of food, the big reward. Uh, kenneling up, going into the kennel, we're using a little bit of food for that right now. We're gonna phase the food out pretty quickly. I'm not a treat trainer, but I do use food to motivate dogs at times, especially when they're early, uh, young, and it's early on in the training. We phase it out relatively quickly. Um, but you can hear already she settled in. That wasn't long, it probably took her four or five minutes. That used to be four or five hours to start out with. It went to 45 minutes and now it's four or five minutes. Pretty soon she's just gonna realize, you know what, don't fight it. Uh, it's okay, first off, that's part of the reason. I think she's uncertain. I don't think she was, uh, she's got, she came here without a lot of confidence being left alone, especially in a kennel. Um, now she's got two dogs in kennels next to her right now that are quiet as a mouse. I mean, they just, but they're dogs that have been living here their whole lives. One of them's Cody, who's back for training. We're gonna talk about her in a minute. Um, and the other one is Taylor, who lives here. And, and kennels aren't bad. We leave the dogs in the kennels with the doors open because it, they just it's a safe, comfortable place for them. Arrow right now doesn't think that. So we need her to understand it. And so we're gonna do a lot of positive things with the kennel. We're not gonna use it as a punishment tool. Um, we're gonna encourage her to go in. She's gonna get a reward. We're gonna actually turn it into a game. Kenneling up is gonna turn it into a game, um, a fun game with a lot of reward associated. Early on it'll be food, then it'll be praise. Um, but so that's kind of the stuff that we're doing. It's very, very foundational. Um, we're the little bit of early retrieve. The reason I'm doing that is because we are going to do a little bit of tracking stuff with her. We're going to put some, I'm going to start putting a blood trail scent, our dog bone blood trail scent. I'm going to start putting it on the tennis ball. Um, start associating the idea of this thing smells like something. 
the, that's not the reward. The reward is the retrieve and the praise. But now we're going to start adding layers to the idea of not only does that tennis ball get me a retrieve, but something that smells like this gets me a retrieve, gets me a reward, gets me praise. Um, so we'll start doing that. We'll also start where we um, do some little drags. We're gonna do some little little drags lines for her just to tap into what she already has, natural tracking ability, guaranteed that dog's gonna track. Don't have to worry about that at all. She's got a great nose. Um, but we're just gonna bring it out and we're gonna study it and we're gonna learn what it looks like when she's on the track and we're gonna learn what it looks like when she lost the track. That's the value of us from a training standpoint, doing lines, is understanding what they look like. What does their body language look like when she's got something on, when she's on the trail? What happens when she's off the trail? So when we don't know where the trail is, like we control where the trail goes, we put the trail down. So we know what, what and when things happen, why they're happening from a body language standpoint. Here's a turn, 90 degrees, she ran past it. Boy, her body language changed. That tells me she's not on the track. So when we don't know where the track is, we can read that and go, I don't think she's on it. Now I do, she's got scent of it now. So this is just pieces of the puzzle that we're gonna start helping her put together, which ultimately helps us put the pieces of the puzzle together uh, when it comes to, to actually tracking with her. So we're just we're just getting going. I, it's a week and, we're a week and a half into it. And I have to remind myself and realize that just because we're under a time restraint, we're not. I mean, these uh, her owners are going to be back in a couple of weeks, so I've only got her for a month. And I went went into it with the understanding, with them understanding, miracles won't happen in four weeks, um, but we are going to start taking steps in the right direction. And so the simple fact that she went into that kennel and quieted down after one little fit. And now she's quiet and now she's soaking in um, and, and allowing what we worked on here this morning to kind of settle in and put into her memory. Because of that, that's progress. Um, because we don't let her free run, that's progress. We're eliminating the freedom of, of getting into trouble. Um, we're starting to you know just put in these good habits that eventually we will need, 100% are going to need when it comes to setting up the more formal drills. So let's talk a little more formal drills now. We've got Cody. Cody's another project of ours. Go back, Cody. Now, Ben, we're going to do probably a, a well, arrow stuff's going to go to YouTube. It's also going to probably go to our Facebook, mm -hmm. and, and we'll have little short versions of it on Instagram. I don't know. We might even start doing some of that Instagram TV stuff for longer stuff, but I don't know much about that. But we'll, I, I want to be able to try to put these things in as many places as people can consume it, but... Um, we just have to have a good understanding of what makes the most sense. But anyway, Cody Go Back is a series that we have going right now. It's literally going to be caught up now live. This We just filmed the 18th one. Um, we started with her three weeks ago. We took a week off. So I think we went two weeks, maybe a little short of three weeks. Then she went home for a week. Now she's back. So we're doing, we call it Cody Go Back. Um, it's hand signals. So we're teaching the dog to go back. Um, in back cast. We're going to teach the dog to go right. We're going to teach the dog to go left. Um, she's a gun dog. So we're prepping her for this upcoming season. She just turned two. Uh, so it's another example of I do things way slower than most people. Um, there are a lot of people that would say, You're, oh, you got to have them doing this by this date. I don't care about that stuff. I think it's when the dog is ready. Last year, um, timing wise, we shot some birds over, but she wasn't handling. Uh, it was training. It was an extension of training into the actual season just because of the time of the year, the season was there. So we took advantage of it. <clears throat> this year, we're going to build in um, our handle handling, uh, back casting, lefts and rights. Um, she does upland, so she quarters and casts. And we ran into some issues with she was real heavy on upland. Um, she lost very little of her steadiness, which is really good. Uh, that goes back to the foundation we put in that dog from the beginning. Um, we spent a year and a half uh, of, of getting nice retrieve, steadiness, control, real v solid foundational stuff, um, which is, is allowing us to do back casting. Pretty simply, um, right and lefts are going to be real easy, I think, uh, because back is going well. Um, right and lefts will will go quickly, um, relatively, I guess. But you got to remember, she's two years old, so I was real patient to get to this point, and I'm not going to 
stop being patient and rush things because we're here and the season's coming. We'll get there when we get there. Um, but so we just filmed number 18. So when I say it's live, we film, we started filming for, I bet you we did 10 days before we posted the first one. Yeah. And we just kind of built up a little inventory of them. And then we've been posting them almost daily since the start. Um, so by taking a week off, we're about caught up now. Like we're going to be posting today's today's filming is going to be posted tomorrow. Tomorrow. So do we have one in between though? Do we have one? We in have between? one. Number 17 is going to go today. Number 17 is going to go today, yep. which was the last one we filmed before the break. Yep. So 17 will be live um, today on our, on our YouTube and, and we'll have videos, links and stuff through Facebook and our Instagram and all that stuff. And then, Tomorrow, day 18, will actually have been filmed the day before. So it's like, it's really up to speed. Um, I think this is a real fun project. Uh, I, it's not live necessarily because our connection doesn't allow us to go live, but it's as live as you're gonna get. Ben is editing it a bit because he's got two cameras, so he's just changing angles, but you're not cutting. You're not cutting mm-hmm. stuff out. You're not you're not eliminating you just push record and with between the two cameras the session gets recorded and then you just jump from camera to camera Mm -hmm. but um because i want you guys to see how many mistakes i make i want you to see the problems that i create for cody i have made issues i have created problems we have learned from them and i think we've adjusted and adapted accordingly to get her over it she made a couple mistakes today um, intentionally almost like, uh, some of them, I actually set her up to, to make those mistakes. I always tell people don't set your dog up to fail. Occasionally. I think you do have to a little bit because you have to have them have an opportunity to learn. If all you do is coddle them and make it super easy all the time, they don't, you don't challenge them. Now that's further down the road that you start taking that mentality early on. You do have to set it up, tee it up for them so that they can learn the behavior. And then once they learn the behavior, then you can start to challenge them with distractions and and layers of complication that create a little bit of a trip up that you can correct as long as your timing is good. Your timing for the correction has to be right. Your timing for the praise or the approval of what they did has to be precise. That's how they learn. So with her, um, we got back into it after one week being off and she did really well. Um, I, I thought it was a great session. Uh, she picked right up. It was real interesting. She, she almost anticipated the drills to start out with. I, I, had, a, I had a plan of how I was going to start out. I was going to start her out sending her back over a barrier, a little fence, snow fence that we use. I was going to send her back over it. Um, I lined her out for it, and she ran about 15, 20 yards and stopped and turned around and was like, cast me back. No, I don't want dogs anticipating. I want them to be honest. So I didn't cast her back. Now, back in the day, if you back up, I don't know, a week to two weeks, I probably would have sent her back at that point because I would have been real happy with her anticipating this drill and understanding kind of what we're doing. Now she should know it, and I don't want her assuming. So when I sent her out and she turned around, I said, nope, come back here. I called her back. I turned around and I lined her. And I had to send her with a little more enthusiasm, a little more voice, a little more oomph to get her going. And I sent her through and I would not, I, I certainly was not going to stop her and, and backcast her. So that drill that started out to be a refresher of a back, simple back, go back ended up being a simple line, send, send to the memory go over a barrier. So we ended up extending that out. We did that a couple times before we even thought about sending her back, keeping her honest and also stretching her out, getting a nice long uh, straight running line from her. The other thing that was kind of good uh, that if you watch the video, you'll see is over the series, we've, we've been mowing, I mow the lawn, I mow the grass I mow our training areas. We use our training areas specifically Um, to develop things and and grow things in our training. And as the grass grows, I was cutting it. And I was using it to create runways and channels. Um, Helps the dog, less friction. Um, Keeps them within kind of some barriers, some some walls, if you will. It's like a big hallway for them. Tall grass on the side. I have slowly, as she's gotten better, moved locations, first off. 
and then the other, re and that's to give her experience in another spot. But it's also because now I'm, I'm, I'm changing that training grounds. I'm changing the look of it. I'm slowly letting the grass grow in a lot of areas and working her through them the same spot. So geographically it's the same spot, but it's looking different every week. The grass is getting taller pretty soon. If I started out in a field with tall grass, she'd fail. But if I st start out in a field with small grass and she gets good in that area and comfortable in that area, and as the grass grows, I don't cut it eventually, eventually that grass is gonna get tall like it would have been if I had started it in the tall grass. She'll transfer the behavior and the understanding of the skill as the grass grows, and the grass takes a while to grow. So it's a little bit of a patience thing for us. But by the time that grass gets tall, I hope that, be, that I've done a good enough job with the behavior to have her understand what it is we're looking for. And so we're gonna use um, that specific area for that. And then I'm gonna start moving. Then I'm gonna move into new areas. Um, we started introducing some diversions. That threw her for a little bit of a loop. Uh, we'll continue to do that because she's getting better. Um, she did pretty well with it today. Um, but I just love wa I love watching the progress of these dogs. I love watching the idea of them figuring it out. I love watching them understand, start to understand what it is we're asking. Whenever dogs have issues, it's because they don't understand. It's not because they don't want to do it. They just don't understand. So keep it in mind, if they're making mistakes, almost always it's because of us. It's because of me. Any of the, you watch any of the go back Cody, Cody go backs, you're going to see a lot of the mistakes, if not all of them are because of my setup, sometimes intentional, sometimes not. But if you're not aware of that and accepting of that and okay with that, and then you adjust accordingly, your dog's going to hit roadblocks and not get through it. So you have to be, um, you have to be conscious of that. You got to be aware of that. So, uh, those are two updates on uh, things that we got going, man. Um, they're, they're projects that are ongoing. You can hear how quickly Little Arrow settled in. She's doing a really nice job. I'm, I'm excited about continuing with her uh, for the short window of time that we have with her. Um, beyond that, doesn't mean, like once, she, once her family does come back and she goes with them, I don't anticipate it ending. I just don't anticipate it being here. Uh, that'll be a real interesting thing. And I, I, don't mind, I, I don't mind the idea and I kind of enjoy the idea of It'll be the first time we've ever done it, but documenting long distance training. Um, we, I've done kind of long distance training before with people, helped them train their own dog. Um, but this would be something that would be interesting to probably share because what's gonna create a lot of the issues is not the dog, it's the people. Uh, it's gonna be the communication between me and the owners and how can I get them to understand? How can I show them? How can I, how can I figure out how to bridge that distance, that gap that's going to create some static in between me and them. Um, it's just like that game where you start whisper something into someone's ear and by the time it goes around the circle, the message has changed. Well, that can potentially happen when it comes to trying to long distance help someone train their dog. So it'll be a challenge. I think it's something that we may look at doing. Um, and, and I think there might be some value in that for everybody, including the, the owners. Um, so Looking forward to doing that. Cody's gonna keep pushing on. Um, and then we've got another project. We probably won't even touch on it right now because it's getting getting into close to a half hour right now, but we've got another project coming. I'm real excited about um, We're about a week and a half away from it. We'll talk about it in an upcoming podcast. Um, we'll spend some podcasts themselves talking about it. Um, it's a part, it, it's a, we're gonna be in partnership with a couple different groups on it. Um, and I don't know if I should really, I don't know if I call it a partnership, but uh, the documentation process is going to be in a few different locations from what I, uh, what we're working on right now. Um, and it's got a personal value to me on it. It's going to be a client. It, well, I won't even get into it, but um, there'll be value with clients. There'll be value with the training process. There'll be value with all sorts of stuff with it. I hope uh, that's our intentions. Just one of many other projects that we are working on right now, um, finalizing some of the details on got several of them coming up. So uh, that's about it. We're just shy of 30 minutes. Thank you guys so much for listening.